Welcome, everybody. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Duncan Rowe, uh, for whom 1993 was the year of Linux in the desktop, which is something that uh, very few of us can say. Uh, Duncan will be talking about NF tables, the, the next evolution of, of IP filtering in Linux. So please join me in welcoming Duncan. Oh, thank you, everyone. Is this working? Hello? Can you hear me all right? All good. Um, well, welcome to this presentation on NF tables. Um, NF tables is a successor framework to IP tables and family, um, just as IP tables succeeded IP chains in Linux 2.4 uh, 15 years ago. Could I just have a show of hands? How many people are familiar with IP tables? Great. And how many have played with NF tables? A oh, few. Right. Good. Well, um, next slide. Well, this slide uh, paraphrases the wiki page of the same name. Um, the latest kernel that I've found with NF tables updates is. Um, 4.13.13, so you do want to be up to date. Um, I'll, uh, NFT is the command line utility, and uh, there's the project homepage. Um, yeah, the compatibility to run IP tables over NF tables kernel is kind of separate, so I'll, I'll deal with that now and get it out of the way. Okay. Um, IP tables, nowadays when you get an IP, tail, IP tables distribution, uh, everything's a symlink, well, practically everything. Yeah, there we are. Um, oh, I should have done something else, sorry. Uh, the, the, um, the, um, the original design was to um, allow you to switch by changing siblings, but that tends, but it's important to make sure first that it can actually cope with um, what you're going to do because it won't give you, they won't give you error messages. Excuse me a sec. Uh, oh, been shipped. No. Uh, There they all are, and you see there's, there's, there's a, a compat for almost everything. The IP6 tables, compat, IP tables, IP tables compat, and they, they both point to these great big blobs that do things, X tables multi and X tables compat multi. So you could just change them, but... Um, the volume up. Uh, do I have control of that, or is that someone else? Any better? Oh. Looks pretty far up already. Oh, there, it's a bit better, yeah. Um, yes, the problem is with these things, if you run IP tables compact and it gets a rule that it doesn't know how to deal with, it doesn't tell you anything, it doesn't even return you an error message, but you will have to reboot your system at some point later because it will have messed up your database. So, um, Going back to, back to the main thing, you use IP tables translate restore to convert everything. Um, that's a two-stage two process. First of all, you, um, do I believe, oh, I was gonna, yes, it's, um, <coughs> I'll show you, I'll get it from the wiki, because that's what it tells you how to do. Yeah, first of all, you, um, you do an IP tables. It's funny doing this, turning around. You do that one. <coughs> you have to do that as root. Uh, 
as root. You can see it's dark red color to remind me it's a root, a root prompt. And does that, and we can look at that file to see what it looks like. Um, fairly incomprehensible, but that's, that's, the, um, that's, all, that's all the data from the... The reason I've got IP tables rules on this system is that I'm running libvert, and libvert is still spitting out um, IP tables rules to make up its bridge stuff. Um, and uh, um, whatever else it does. I believe, I believe Docker is the same. Uh, right, so the next command is um, this one. Oh. I'll get used to this, looking at this. Now, what we're looking out for when we run this is we're looking out for commands that it can't um, translate. So we'll pipe it through a list, or K in my case. Oh, yeah. Yeah, K is um, part of my uh, command line toolbox that I never get to present about at LCA. Oh, wait a minute. Sorry, I'm still on the old one. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Quit. Get out of that. Try it again. And we'll do it again. Right, okay. All right. See this little comment, line, comment up here? Hyphen T mangle, hyphen A post routing. It hasn't translated that one. That's why it spat out a comment to say I couldn't do anything with this. Um, all these, uh, many of these chains that it adds, they were in the original rule set, so it does it. But it doesn't need, you don't need them. You don't need chains in IP, in, I, in NFT, you don't need chains that don't have rules. Um, but, except you have to have the post-routing and pre-routing, otherwise it won't, do, it won't do that. You have to have them whether they've got rules or not. But everything else, you can, um, you can actually remove a lot of these rules, they aren't required. But I'll be doing a bit more of that later. So anyway, uh, this shows that um, at the moment libvert is not a candidate for um, moving over to NF tables, which is only a problem if you want to do natting yourself, because um, old IP tables nat and uh, NFT nat uh, fight. You can't have them both at once. That's, that's the reason why you really want to move stuff across. Okay, that's, that's, the, that's that demo. So I'll go back to here. All right, there's also an IP table translate which translates individual rules. You can run this as a non-privileged user because it's just, um, wait a minute, I forgot to read the instructions. Dot one dot a yeah. So I'm focus. Yep. Uh, well, here's the command we're going to try and we're going to issue. Uh, it translates that. That's the. Um, that's, if you, you'd not, you would have had IP tables there, then you would have had high, all this stuff. That's just the IP tables argument. It's made an NFT rule, um, which hopefully makes sense. Uh, the family, the, the, um, the internet family is IP. The um, table is net post, uh, no, yeah, table net chain post routing. Now, it's been a bit conservative here. OIF name is, um, the textual name of the interface, and it's made a rule that will compare that every, every packet that comes through. Well, it's actually more efficient. If you know that uh, that interface is a fixed, a fixed um, index number, which it does have because it's a hardware um, device, you can actually just use OIF, and that would be, much, that would be more efficient because that does, does a numeric com comparison on the 
interface index. So it's, uh, with these translate tools, you really want to go, go over what, what they've produced and um, trim it a bit afterwards. Right. Well, that's, that's what I'm going to say about compatibility. Um, so on to, on to the next one. Uh, we're back to this slide. Um, the command line utility in FT, as you've already seen slightly, has uh, got a new syntax from before, um, which is what I'll be mostly talking about for the rest of this talk. And the other thing that is new with NF tables is the generic set infrastructure. This, this means that where you used to have a whole lot of IP tables rules for different internet addresses, you can now put them all into a set which is hashed and um, very quickly looked up. So it doesn't matter if you have thousands of different IP addresses. Uh, you can insert these at any time and remove them at any time. And you can give them timeouts when you insert them. Now, this is, um, this is the flow that packets go through the system. It's, um, it looks very similar. It, it actually is. It's the same flow. The flow through the system hasn't changed. NF tables is really a, a new packet classification system, except that the ingress hook up the top there is new. Uh, that lets you look at packets as they come off the controller. Um, so that's, that's that. Uh, Look at that one. Um, um, <clears throat> when, you, when you're getting into this, you want to look at the documentation. Uh, uh, there was actually a, a new release of um, NF tables last week, so you don't need to go to Git for a little while to get the fairly up-to-date man page. Uh, here it is. It's quite a daunting thing. Goes on for a long time. Oh, I've lost focus. Um, it's full of tables. It's a very good reference source. It's full of tables of what stuff are. And we'll look at that again. I'll show you something from, late, late from that later. Okay. Um, the next thing is the is the wiki. Uh, that's um, a much more gentle introduction to. Um, NF tables, and that's what I used when I was. Well, that's you saw me using it before. That's that's not the index. That's the next level down. But the index is just there. So that's um that's a really good um, place to start if you're doing the, if you're doing um if you're doing the conversion. And the third place is the error messages that NFT gives you. They're actually um, extremely um, helpful. A lot of, a lot of um, effort has gone into making them uh, as informative as they can be. What, the way NFT works is it builds up an image in, mem in memory of what it's going to give to NetFilter, and, and it gives us a whole lot, if you're, if you're in a script at least, um, rather than just, um, yeah, if, if you were in a script as you normally would be, um, it gives, um, it, it builds an image of what it's going to give to um, the kernel via, NF, um, via NetFilter, and it, when it gives it to the kernel, it's a completely atomic operation. Um, if, if you've said, uh, as you generally would, to flush the old rule set, and then defined it all again, uh, then um, you can have an atomic changeover of your uh, firewall rules with, uh, with no downtime in the middle. Uh, right. Well, <clears throat> I mentioned scripts just now. It's a bit more about them. Um, atomic up update of the kernel structures. If you make a mistake and your script is rejected, then nothing happens. And the script re reflects the hierarchical nature of NF tables. So um, a single script, well, I can actually, well, I'll be showing you one in a little while. 
uh, or no, is um, a single script can, can be all your rules and laid out in a form where they're um, quite, um, well, they're, they're sort of logical and easy to see. I'll, get, I'll just put it up. Get out of less. Maybe. Come on. Oh, that's the man page. You can't get out of that. Especially that. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry about that. This one. That's my that's my um, script uh, for this um, for this laptop here. Basically, it's uh, it's trying to keep out Nazis from the wireless LAN. Uh, and um, uh, it's everything. It's um, oh, it's just covered everything. So it, you can. See the look. Um, actually, maybe I'll go back to the previous slide. Uh, next slide. Right. Stick to the script. Hold. Okay. This is a brief summary of the uh, of the hierarchical nature. You've got tables, which are um, per address family. So you can you can do absolutely everything IP filter ever did in one single table. Or you can have multiple ones if you want to have, because you can flush tables. So you, you might have different subsystems that when they come up, make a table, and when they go down, get rid, get rid of it. Uh, tables contain chains. Uh, chains are what chains get, <clears throat> get their input from, either from the kernel via what's called hooks, which is how the old chains worked in, in IP tables. If you've got a hook, it means this chain is going to get given, um, like with filter. Um, if it's a filter chain and you use the filter hook, you get you get the same as um, IP tables filter filter used to do. IP tables table filter, um, and then rules which are inside the chains, which is um, what. <clears throat> Yes, what, what they sort of were in IP tables, except that the rules are now in separate lines of their own and can have uh, multiple tests and even multiple actions. Uh, in more detail of these three, these tables, you have to have a separate... There's a, there's a new INET table, so you can have a, a table that covers uh, IP4 and IP6 all in one table. Some rules are specific to... Uh, one or the other, such as if you give um, if you give IP4 addresses, it's obviously an IP4 rule. But ports are like common between them. Um, you only need to have tables for families of interest if you if you're not doing anything with ARP or um, if you're not doing anything with IP6, you don't have to have, have an IP6 table, for instance. Uh, and as I mentioned before, yes. It, you can do everything for a single family that the corresponding tables utility did. And you can have multiples. I just said that. I should have, that, was, I, that belonged with this slide, really. <laughs> OK. Um, right. Chains contain rules. Uh, they have a default policy, drop or accept. And they can, yes, you, you either get input from a hook or you jump to them, which is like you did in IP tables where you jump to chains. You can still do that. And several chains can have the same hook. That's a bit new. Um, the order in which they are processed is set by a priority. And priority is part of what you have to, have to or, may, or may give anyway when you, um, when you, define, when you declare a chain. You, you declare its priority. And, uh, the more negative it is, the higher the priority. Rules can have 
uh, a number of actions, and they don't have a counter unless you say you want one. A counter is an action, just like any other, but you can, you can um, if you don't put counter, you won't, you won't get a count of bytes, uh, which maybe for a rule you really don't care about, save some overhead, I suppose. Now, look, moving on to sets and ranges. Oh. Um, as I mentioned, sets and ranges are collections. And you specify the type. It can be quite complex. It can, it can be uh, an IP address or a combination of source and destination addresses or ports or uh, lots of different things, really. Um, yes. Oops, wrong one. So I have a demo for that. Put out of that one. Not that one. Oh, that was all right. That's it. This is if, if I was running um, BitTorrent and I wanted to accept run run it on port seventy five hundred, so I want to let these these calls in. This is the command. Uh, in in my oh, when you're sorry when when you're editing the rule set. Um, it's, it's handy to be able to watch uh, what, it, what, it, what it currently is. So if you've got a watch of um, a watch going on, on what is the current rule set, you can see it change as you, as you do stuff. So I happen to have one that I prepared earlier. That's actually running every two seconds looking at NFT list rule set. And if I can add this element, Where's the cursor gone? Oh, it's over there. And see the elements popped in there? So, um, and I can take it away again. It's gone. I can also Add a range. But it gives me an error message. And <clears throat> looking at the error message, it's, it's, it's explained quite well. The declaration of my chain, my set, I said what it was. I said it's a, it's a collection of objects of type INET service or port. I didn't say it, can, it would, it would, it would um, might contain intervals. So it's built a more efficient um, set which can't accept intervals. And the fix is to edit um, the, uh, ed edit the rule set that I showed you before. Um, and put that flag in. So we're looking for INET service. Yeah, 
that for a while. Well, it's 19 we want to change anyway. And I've set up this um, so that I can, I can just uh, bind, a, bind a key to actually obey this script. I have to save it first, though. So. And the last line in the script prints out what the table is now. But you'll see that on the, on the, uh, on the monitor, we've got flags interval. So now I can repeat that. Um, attempt and it should work this time. And there they are. Uh, and I can remove them again. Uh, I can try deleting part of the range. And in this case, um, NFT is um, validated as, as a command given to the kernel. The kernel has uh, returned the error that it doesn't have that range. It doesn't actually know of a range as a, as a it can't split them up, split them up. It just knows a range as a, as a fixed thing. So I can't remove part of it, but I can remove all of it. And they've gone. There we are. Oh, I've got Firefox here for a Oh, sorry, that's... That, by the way, is the log file. That shows um, those, those are things that the rules are logging. Um, two, sorry, don't know why I'm seeing these packets, but anyway, I, I don't want them. But um, sometimes it's handy to have a log, it's handy to have a log of um, what's going on because um, you want to make sure that um, when you think you're dropping stuff, then you really are. Although you also can just look at the counts and your rule. So we've, we've uh, according to this, we've only, oh, this is, this is continuously, um, this is continually issuing NFT lists every two seconds. So, uh, oh, I don't know. Packets. According to this, we've only logged, one, only logged two packets, but according to what you saw, there are a lot. So, something going on there I have to look into. Oh, I see what's happened. Oh, right. <coughs> okay. There's some lessons I learned when I was um, doing the translation. Um, um, NFT will, um, if you accept related packets, that covers all manner of um, things you might not expect. In, in particular, it, it covers successive pings. And if you're, trying to, if you're trying to rate limit on pings, you have to make sure to do that before you accept the related packets. Um, And then, for the ones that are over the rate, they're still actually, <clears throat> because, because, because the limit rule, um, the limit rule just says how many it's going to let in, 
and those, those packets it lets in are now classified as being all right. The rest of the packets, the rest of the things are actually still there waiting to be classified, so you have to, um, you, you have to uh, drop them explicitly, or other, other, otherwise they'll get either the chain policy or whatever your last rule is. I, I, have, a, I have a last rule of drop at the end of um, my chain, so that if, although the policy is accept, the chain policy is accept, but in fact, because I drop everything, um, the policy is drop, except that when I do drop them, I've got a counter so I can see what I'm dropping that I haven't considered. That counter should stay at zero. I, I aim to consider everything. And then, um, so that's, uh, that's what I do anyway. Um, and for, for ICOMP, you don't want to rate limit uh, inform, 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 informative ones. If we go back to what the, um, the rule set is, um, just uh, disappear again. Um, down the bottom of this chain. Ah, counter lub. Oh, that's where it is. Drop everything else. Counter lub. That's where the other things are um, popping up from, I expect. Bring this monitor back. Oh, there they are. There's all the packets being lugged that I didn't know about. Oh well, maybe I maybe I maybe I don't maybe it is okay to drop off the end. That's where they're mostly going. So these are these are packets that I um, didn't accept. You know, packets I didn't accept, and um, there's a, quite a few of them keeps on going up. Uh, and you can see the log logs down one one level down. Uh, Destin uh, Mac equals source. Destination 138.44. That's not um that's not a multicast, is it? Oh, 138.44 sounds like me. Um I, 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 F. Yeah, 133.44.249. 138 is me, so it's sending stuff to me that I'm throwing away. Yeah. Don't know why, I don't know who that is, but anyway, I'm not getting them. They might be, oh well, don't know what they are. Anyway, that's interesting. So, stuff is coming to me. Anyone see what the port is? This port, three, three, four. I don't know. I don't know what these things are. Anyway, it's the sort of rubbish that comes in if you don't, if you don't block it off. But I don't, I don't know if anything's listening on that port. I, mean, I could look, but so. Oh, all right. Well, there you are. That's, that's why you have IP tables. That's why you have NF tables. <laughs> yes, so they are. Wow. Yep, something's trying to get in. Well, they can try for a long time before they find anything. <laughs> oh, by the way, in error messages, I, sh I, I, I meant to show you earlier, the man page actually has some examples just down the bottom. Come on. Oh, I haven't got focus. Uh. 
There's, there's a couple. So, uh, so if they are very uh, quite explanatory, I think you'll agree. Um, I just haven't seen that good, anything much else that good. And there's the old op not permitted. That's where NFT can't actually knock it back. Looks all right. Gives it to the colonel. Colonel says, no way. So, wonder, wonder if they're still scanning. I expect they are. Three five hundred. Oh, looks like they've given up. Going to thirty three five hundred and stopped. Oh well. All right. We're actually getting fairly close to the end. Yeah. Oh, I mentioned this when I was when I did the edit earlier. For some reason. Um, Meta L4 Proto, which is, uh, is mostly hidden. <coughs> lots, of, lots of tests that you do will Im imply, imply that. But it, for some reason, unless you're actually in, inside, unless you actually do a list while you're actually inside the script, you don't see it except for cases where you have to put it. You have to put it sometimes because that's the only test on the line. And um, if you didn't put it, it would, it would be a syntax error. So. Um, I could show you, oh, you've probably seen enough. <laughs> OK, um, and um, I think that might be it. So let's have a look. Yep, all right. Well, I um, hope you found that uh, comprehensible to some extent. And uh, I'll have you to take any questions. Manual. Microphone person. So the, the set capability seems to be like IP sets from, uh, that are used with IP tables. Is yes. there a, is there, um, uh, I'm using IP sets, is there a, uh, are they, are IP sets uh, more efficient that when used with IP tables? Um, I would think they must be. I would, uh, um, I would think they would they would be some I, I think they would be somewhat more efficient because they're fully integrated. Uh, but they are quite like IP sets, you're right there. Um, there's actually some, some benchmarking that's gone on for that. All right. So so a while ago, um, I think it was probably about two years old, but uh, but you, you can actually find some uh, some benchmarks that a particular Red Hat team did. They they put it on their blog. What did they find? They found that Oh, okay. That is to say, if you use IP sets and the generic sets facility in, uh, in the um, NF tables, you'll find that the two have uh, basically distinguishable um, packet processing performance. Please uh, use your questions in the form of a question. So, um, so uh, yeah, apparently, much the same according to the benchmarks. Thanks for the introduction. I'm still kind of confused as to why did we need an entire new file su uh, subsystem with a different syntax? W why was it just not an improvement to IP tables we're using what we've been writing and using for the last 15 years, as in all the rules that we already have? Well, um, it wasn't my idea, but I will show you something else that um, I, I didn't mention before. Um, when you come to, you see I'm just doing an FT list rule set. And that's showing everything. That's showing if I had IP6 rules, if I had EB tables rules, if I had ARP rules, it would show me everything. Now, if I want to see everything that I'm, is happening in IP tables, I have to, uh, uh, that is not so simple. 
This is the command that I ask people to do if, they, if I get questions about IP tables on Express Exchange. Right, yeah, I do that. But you could extend the user space to just add a dash all that does everything without changing everything like it's been done right now. I mean, you're right about what you're saying, right? But you could add, just extend it without redoing everything with a different syntax. Um, well, to be, you want to be sure you know which table has got which rule in it. That's why I've got the set hyphen x. So I know here I'm missing the mangle table. And it's, it's got a rule in it, but I, I can tell it's in the mangle table. I haven't seen the output from hyphen all. Is that, is that? I'm not saying it exists. I'm saying <laughs> I was kind of wishing they were just added and we could keep using what we have. I'm still not convinced as to why you need to switch to NF tables as opposed to just adding the missing bits to IP tables as improvements. Um, the wiki says something about why NF tables. Um, there it is. Oh, how nice. So let's see what it says. Oh, it's partly a maintenance issue. Um, yeah, they're saying it's faster, but apparently it's not necessarily much faster. But anyway, it's, it's built in, so you don't have to worry about another subsystem. Uh, the IP4 is better, better rule set up, up you know, the, the um, atomic rule set update is, uh, well, that's their justification. There we are. Uh, I'm not them. <laughs> I can't, uh, but that happens with everything. It's been a theme of the conference, you know, how stuff is uh, replaced by new stuff and that's just how it is. Okay, we have about three minutes left, so please raise your hand if you have another question. In the meantime, I have a quick one. Uh, Duncan, do you expect that this will fully supplant uh, IP tables? And if so, what, what sort of timeline are we looking at? Well, um, Pablo said to me that they, they could have easily done that. Uh, um, um, missing um, mangle table check something, but they just didn't think anyone anyone wanted it. So um, I would say, as 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 people find um, things that can't be done, well, there is there is one there are one or two known areas where they they're still working on it. It's not a big team, so it's just been an, an absolute guess on my part. But um, it does absolutely everything. Or, <clears throat> Or, or um, I, I don't know, it might be a year or two for, before that. But, but for now, a lot of people can start moving over because it does enough for them. Is it, um, is it included in distributions? Well, yeah, the, uh, the Slackware distribution that came out 18 months ago had NF tables because I used to, make the, I used to maintain the Slack build when it was 14.1 and it wasn't in main Slackware. And my Slack build became um, replaced by... Uh, by the standard distro uh, 18 months ago. That would be quite an old version of NF tables. I wouldn't use it. I'd get a new one from the new re newest released one now. But yeah, so if Slackware's doing it, I should think everyone else must be. But I don't know. All right, we have time for one last question, if anybody has one. All right, please join me in thanking Duncan. So it's, it's lunchtime now, uh, free lunch in the, uh, in the green space, and we're back here um, in about an hour and 15 minutes. Thank you.